What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network, here for a reading of the most important and prolific book about monetary economics, The Ethics of Money Production, by Dr. Jörg Guido Holtzmann, published on October 22, 2008. Thank you endlessly for Professor Dr. Holtzmann for writing this outstanding work and for the Mises Institute for providing this source of knowledge to the public domain. Thank you very much, and let's continue here with the reading. Today, the contents and the preface. This book has three parts. Part one, the natural production of money, includes a chapter on different monies, money certificates, money within the market process, utilitarian considerations of the production of money, and part two, inflation, general considerations on inflation, private inflation, that is counterfeiting money certificates, Enter the state, fiat inflation through legal privileges, legalized falsifications, legal monopolies, legal tender laws, legalized suspension of payments, paper money, the cultural and spiritual legacy of fiat inflation. And part three, monetary order and monetary systems. Includes monetary order, fiat monetary systems in the realm of the nation state, international banking systems from 1871 till 1971, international paper money systems from 1970 on till hopefully not so long anymore. And finally, the conclusion with some references and indices. The preface written by Professor Dr. Hiltzman. It has been a long-standing project of mine to give a concise exposition of monetary theory with special emphasis on the ethical and institutional aspects of money production. Money and banking have been covered more than any other subject in economics. Still, there is reason to hope that the following pages will not be superfluous, for they, for they combine three elements that have not previously been integrated into a single work. First, this book applies the tradition of philosophical realism to the analysis of money and banking. The great pioneer of this approach was the 14th century mathematician, physicist, economist, and bishop, Nicholas Oresme who wrote the first treatise ever on inflation and, in fact, the very first treatise on an economic problem. Oresme exclusively dealt with the debasement of coins, a form of inflation that is unimportant in our age. But the principles he brought to bear on his subject are still up to date and have, by and large, remained unsurpassed. In modern times, Oresme's work has found its vindication in the writings of the Austrian school. The Austrian theory of banking and fiat money is the second element of our analysis. The Austrian school is justly famous for the standard bearing bearer of the realist tradition in economics and also as a champion of the free market policies. Seven generations of Austrian economists have explained why private property rights provide a fundamental framework for social cooperation in a truly humane economy. They have stressed the counterproductive effects that result when private property rights are violated by private individuals and governments. And they have granted no exception in the field of money and banking, demonstrating that without private initiative and its correl correlate, personal responsibility, the production of money is perverted into an instrument of exploitation. Only the free and responsible initiatives of private individuals, associations, and firms can create monetary institutions of the sort that truly benefit society and its members. The third element characterizing our approach is the analysis of the ethics of money and banking in line with the scholastic tradition of St. Thomas Aquinas and Nicholas Oresme. Scholatism sought to integrate Arist Ar Aristotelian insights into the intellectual tradition of Christianity under the convic conviction that science and ethics and the projects of reason and faith generally can be considered distinct branches of a unified system of knowledge. 
Murray Rothbard credits Thomassons with the critical development in the field of ethics for it, and quote, demonstrate that the laws of nature, including the nature of mankind, provided the means for man's reason to discover a rational ethics. To be sure, God created the natural laws of the universe, but the apprehension of the natural laws was possible whether or not one believed in God as creator. In this way, a rational ethic for man was provided on a truly scientific rather than one on a supernatural foundation. It was this scholastic line of thought that gave rise to economics as a science, as Joseph Schumper, Schumpeter wrote, and I quote, it is within the scholastic system of moral theology and law that economics gained definite, if not separate, existence. And it is they who come nearer than those any other group to having been the founders of scientific economics. Thus, the scholastic approach seems to be an appropriate starting point for an examination of the ethics of money production, as well both from the point of view of the his history of ideas and for their contemporary application. The aforementioned three elements might at first seem to be odd bedfellows. I hope to show, however, that there is a reason why these three strains of thought have grown up alongside with each other. We will see how, when they are applied to this area, they serve a, as complementary aspects of a generalist realist theory of money, an ontology of money, as it were, and that all these aspects lead to the conclusion that a free market in money production is ethically superior to its logical alternative, money produced based on legal exemptions and privileges. My special thanks go to Professor Jeffrey Herbener and Dr. Emanuel Dakis for extensive commentary on the first draft of this manuscript, and to Mr. Joseph Potts for revising and commenting on the final version. I'm also indebted to Professor Larry Sekrest, Professor Ridrick Long, Dr. Nicholas Gertreff, Dr. Jan Havel, Dr. Arnold Pellissier Tannon, Dr. Lawrence Wenz, and Mr. Robert Gunsinger for their helpful comments, and to the professors Tom Woods, Joseph Salerno, Willem Burnett, Robert Hicks, and Christopher Strom, as well as Mrs. Reinhard Stiebler and Bart Brad Berlow and Phillips Begus for generous assistance in unearthing relevant liter literature. Many years ago, my teacher Hans Lechner awarded my interest in the study of money pol monetary policy, as I gratefully acknowledged. While writing my present book, I have been blessed with the encouragement of Mr. Lou Rockwell and my colleagues Hans Hermann Hoppe, Mark Thornton, Jesus Cuerta de Soto, Marco Bassani, Pascal Sani, uh, Bertrand Leminitzier, and Philip Nimu. Finally, I am grateful to Mr. Jeffrey Tucker for his unflagging support, as well as to my dear wife, Nath Nathalie, for love, friendship, for love and friendship while writing this book. And this was the preface uh, by Professor Jörg Guido Hulsmann, written in Angers in France in August 2007. Piers, this was the introduction and the preface uh, to The Ethics of Money Production, written by Jörg Guido Holtzmann and published by the Mises Institute. Thank you very much for joining me here and see you on the next reading. Bye-bye.